All right guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff Cordero and today I'm gonna to teach you how to get the most out of your sight tape. Today, what we have is the brand new HHA Tetra Max. I have been a huge fan of HHA sights ever since I got into archery. I shot a single pin slider from them on my first bow. I went and tried some different sights from some other companies and eventually came right back to HHA. I think they make a phenomenal product and man, I, I'm never going anywhere else. There's no need to. This was the original Kingpin tournament edition with the three pin slider. This is what I've shot for the last couple of years and I've absolutely loved this sight. There are some things that I wasn't really too particularly keen on, but I kind of just dealt with them because I thought this was an amazing sight. First and foremost was the, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, but it's the piece that swivels that allows light to get to the fiber optic. It's like a rheostat maybe, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but this is what spins and allows light to get into the fiber. So you can either shut this down and it lets less light in, dulling your pin, making it less bright. So during really sunny days when you don't need a lot of light, you can turn this all the way down. And then at dusk, or if you're in a blind, or if it's an overcast day, you can open this thing all the way up and it'll light up your pins and make them really nice and bright. This design, um, wasn't a huge fan of it, but I kind of just dealt with it. At one point I ran a bonus ring. This is a glow in the dark piece of, uh, Neoprene, oh, what the hell is this? Whatever, this is a glow in the dark piece of rubber and I ran it over the top of this site for a little bit and I liked it. It kind of gave me a bigger ring to aim through with my peep than just the ring that came on the inside. This kind of added a little bit to the outside of it and made it a little bit bigger. And I like that, but I, if I wanted to brighten my pins up, I kind of had to like peel it away and then that quite didn't give me the same look that I was looking for. So. I kind of went away from this, but I tried this. This is from Bonus Ring, and I think they make a, a pretty good product. That, like, you could run it on this new site that I have, but this one covering up those fibers, it just didn't do me any good. But out with the old, this is the new HHA Tetra Mac. I got it in the four pin sliding version. So I have my four pins set on the inside, which will range from 20, 30, 40, 50. And then my 50 pin will slide from 50 all the way until I run out of sight tape. So we're gonna weigh these two sites. We'll run the kingpin first. See what the weight is on this. 13.7 ounces. And the new Tetra Max is 13.6 ounces. This is the new mounting bracket they have provided this year versus the old one. They have substantially lightened this bracket up compared to the old ones, probably all the overall weight of the system. So there are some new features in this site compared to this old Kingpin that I really, really am excited about. So in the past and on their old Kingpin design, they had this really large and bulky windage adjustment system and it was just, it was really large and it just kind of was clunky and in my opinion, it looked a little outdated. Meanwhile, on the new Tetra Max, they have come up with a new sleeker design of this windage adjustment bar. So before with the old site, you had this knob that turned on the side. And if you wanted to make large course adjustments left to right, you just had to sit here and spin this and spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it until you got to where you wanted to be. With the new Tetra Max, they have a large course adjustment and then a fine tune spool adjustment. So the large course adjustment would be you'd loosen this Allen up in the front. And when this is loose, you can make this large course adjustment left to right. They have these notches in the back where that's the detent will sit in when you adjust it. So you can make these large adjustments. And then you can use the knob to make your right and left adjustments. Another really cool feature on this is it has the infinite adjust slide rail in the front. Before in the old site you had preset holes and you were kind of limited where you moved the housing. You'd move it up a set of holes at a time. With the infinite adjust mount you simply get the right allen key. We loosen these two cap head bolts, the ones on the inside here, and you can move this whole housing up and down on the rail and be very precise to get the maximum distance you want out. It comes pre-etched with hash marks 
And then on the bracket in here, there is another hash mark so you can line that up with it. So you always have a reference point to come back to. So for someone like me, I will run my spool all the way to the top, lock it down, and then I will use the course adjustment to set my 50 yard or my floating bottom pin. The second axis adjustment on these sites is going to be these two cap head bolts. You will loosen them. I barely crack the top one loose and then I will loosen the bottom one. And then from here, you can use your second adju axis adjustment to move the site to adjust your so scope housing to be level with your bow. The third axis adjustment on this site is here on the side. You loosen this cap head bolt and then you would run this tiny set screw in and out and this will actually change the angle for your third axis of your site. So the actual second axis is this way. This is your second axis and your third axis is when you are pointed down it moves your sight housing in and out because depending on which way your sight housing is, the bubble will track that way. And if your sight housing is off and you are leveling, basing on your bubble, you can actually miss your target if you're shooting steep up or down angles. So that's just some of the new features that they have introduced with this new site compared to the old site. And personally, I like this new site better. It is a much more sleeker, simpler design than the old Kingpin was in the past. I mean, it just looks bulky and it looks like a dinosaur so cool thing is though is these spools are the same so now i have a ton i have a few of these spools with different sight tapes on them another cool thing about these spools that i have noticed is last year when i went to tack i was off by about two yards i don't know if it was altitude or what it was but instead of having to calculate all of my sight tapes being two yards off I simply just ran my housing to home base, locked it down, loosened my set screw, dialed everything to those two yards, cinched it back down, and I had already I had made my pre-adjustment for my two yard cut. So now everything I go to shoot, instead of having to do the math, it was already preset for me. I think this is absolutely awesome, and this is why. For me to get maximum yardage out of my sliding housings what i will do is i will loosen my spool i'll run the rail all the way to the top and i'll lock it down maybe give it just a sixteenth of an inch of adjustment if you need a little bit of play on the back end but if you're looking for maximum distance i'll run this thing all the way to the top from here i will take my rail and i'll probably start here in the middle and i'm going to use my bottom pin and I'm gonna shoot at 20, and I'm gonna back my way all the way up to 50, and I'm gonna set this bottom pin by not moving the pin itself, but by moving the whole housing. Let's say I get to here, and this is 50. I'll lock this down. Now this, where this is, is going to be my home base. So wherever I move this site up and down, I know that when I come back all the way to the top and lock it down, my bottom pin is gonna be 50, my second from the bottom is 40, 30, 20. Once you start moving this site around, it doesn't matter about your 20, 30, 40. So when you run that thing all the way to the top, that's home base. That's when you know your 20, 30, 40 pins are going to be on, your 50 pins going to be on, and then from there is where you use the wheel. So by moving your pin all the way to the bottom of the housing, running your rail all the way to the top, and then using the course adjustment up and down to set your 50, you have set yourself up to get the maximum travel distance out of this housing until you come in contact with your arrow fletchings. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot my 50. I will move the sight wheel a little bit, walk back to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then from there, I'll make note of where these marks are. And really the only one I'm concerned about is my 100 yard pin. So once I determined where my 100 yard mark is going to be on my setup spool, this makes it easy for me. What I will do is I will actually come into here to this bag they provide you with. This comes with an extra wheel that you can put your sight tape on. Some extra parts, Allens. It comes with a different, uh, I have the needle on here for the sight indicator. They also come with a magnified bubble with a line, which I don't really particularly like. So what I'll do is I will fold my sight wheel tape in half. So this makes it easier to read. I'll grab one of the sight tapes. These, I've already taken one off of this, but I will find the one 
that probably closely corresponds with five to 100. I will take my zero, line it up with 50, come down here, and if you see at the bottom, 85 about lines up with 100. If I go one more to a faster tape, it's not quite right, and the tape I have right here is just a little too slow. So if you get into that situation, you kind of either, you have one of two options. You can either choose the best tape according, or you can take a caliper and measure from the zero to the 85 and go onto Archer's Advantage, their website, and actually build your own sight tape. You can be much more fine detailed than you can with these pre-made sight tapes. These are awesome to get started. There's absolutely, I've used these forever. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Most companies will provide you with some pre-made sight tapes. But I think for this new site, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it on Archer's Advantage. Some of the reason why is these sight tapes end at 100 and some of those longer shots at tack and some of the stuff, you know, when you're practicing with your buddies and just having fun and you want to step back to the 110 to 120, if you have the clearance on your site, you're not really going to be able to dial this in. So I think that about covers the HHA. Uh, it comes with also a bracket to mount it on your bow. It comes with a pack of stickers if you're into that, which I have stickers stuck all over my bow press, all over my freezer. It comes with instructions. There's actually a way to do these sight tapes where you shoot in your 20, you move your spool to zero, and then you walk back to all the way to 60, shoot at 60, and then whatever number on that setup tape that it says, that's the corresponding sight tape you would use for your sight. So they make it super simple. I think they have one of the easiest systems. In my opinion, this is the site of sights. It's HHA is an awesome company and I can't say enough about them. Thank you again for watching this video. Hopefully by the time another video comes out, I have a new bow and we're getting that thing set up. Tune in again next time guys. Until then, we'll catch you on the next video.